So we're going to go through the, the Transmit Roadmap. Um, uh, Ulrich, Docker is on, on our roadmap. Uh, it's just a question of, of, of order, right? And then when we, when we get to it, but we're, we're really, it's absolutely there. Um, so right now our active projects are, uh, we talked about the, the COVID-19 public data resources earlier this morning. Uh, and that, that's just an ongoing kind of a background uh, effort that, that just will continue. Um, the big project that we're, we're still working through is the Transmart I2B2 integration. We've got the, you know, and Peter will, will go into this a little more, but we, you know, we, we definitely got the data model uh, uh, in, uh, implemented, but uh, there, there's still a bunch of work that has to get done to be able to use it. So the data is there, it sits there, but for Transmart to be able to understand it, to make use of it, uh, open up the, some of the analysis tools in Transmart uh, is still taking some, some work to do. Uh, and then there's also uh, then transfer installation. I think the Docker falls into the work that we're we're looking at there, and we'll we'll talk about that in a little more uh, in a minute. <clears throat> um, the in terms of it, the the work between ITB2 and Transmart, you know, it's it's the, the question now integrating uh, the study data in a common data model, right? When you get I2D I2B2 data in the Transmart, what do you have to what do we have to do on the code level? to get that useful and usable within the different tools. In the same fashion, when we get Transmart into I2B2, you know, when you load a data set, what does that mean in I2B2 in terms of what has to be done? And so there's, there's not only work to be done, but there's also, you know, the, the teams are working, needing to work together in terms of sorting through what that means, right? So we, we're helping the I2B2 guys, or help, I2B2 guys helping us uh, in terms of how do we actually proceed with that? And I think Peter's gonna talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, there's the single sign-on project. Uh, we it, wouldn't it be nice if when you, once you're logged in, I to be to a Transmart, you were you were in in the environment, right? And so we're continuing work on that. That uh, has been a long ongoing discussion. Uh, and then you know a lot of the things that that I was sort of mentioning is really about the interoperability across you know the the systems, both for the the data itself, but what you can do with it in terms of the analysis and all. Um, so, uh, the hard work in, in terms of on sorting through the data model, a lot of, of significant effort was done during the, uh, up until, you know, during last year, uh, a lot of the deployment and changes were made, uh, I think, uh, in Transmart to get all this working together. We can uh, actively load data from Transmart in ITB2 and uh, ITB2 data into Transmart. Um, and you know now we're we were finishing up the releases of all that on Postgres and Oracle on Transmart side, but there's still a bunch of work to actually make the data usable. So I think this is where I'm going to turn it over to you, Peter, and you can Thanks start to talk about some of this. Yep, details. Yep. So working with uh, the common data model, we're really covering the uh, the six schemas that ITB2 uses and uh, and Transmart used to use two of them, it now has all six. So our goal has been that you could install Transmart and that would include as a subset a full I2B2 database. So we've been running comparisons between Oracle and Postgres for I2B2 and for Transmart and comparing I2B2 against Transmart and uh, working our way through all the differences. We're ignoring SQL Server just because Transmart doesn't support it yet. We like to look at adding a, a SQL Server implementation one day. So the current Transmart code matches the I2B2 tables and has all the stored procedures. We've dropped the columns that Transmart was using that I2B2 wasn't using, and that doesn't seem to have damaged Transmart in any significant way. Uh, there are a few issues to resolve. Um, at the moment, we can load data into Transmart and we can load data into I2B2, but they have various clashes. So for example, um, you have to generate patient numbers and Transmart does that using a sequence. I2B2, I guess, generates patient numbers, so they're always unique for each load, but then Transmart is gonna break it if it's the same number. Um, the fix is, of course, you regenerate the sequence after an ETL in I2B2 or before you do a Transmart one, or possibly both. So there's a workaround for it, but we need to be aware of these issues as, as we go. Uh, next slide, Rudy. Another issue was that just 
um, fixing the, the tables to do the same isn't enough. Um, so ITB2 stores its um, queries in a set of query tables, and Transmart was using the same tables. Uh, that one was fairly easy to resolve. We just replicated the tables with a QTM prefix instead of QT. Uh, it turns out if you search the Transmart code for QT, you only find those tables. So it was a nice, safe, easy fix. And so that now means we can run both platforms and Transmart will store its queries and IT Beta will store its queries. And then we can have a nose around and see if they look similar enough to be able to share them. So what we need now is a common database where we've um, installed Transmart, we've loaded some Transmart studies, and then we want to load that with I2B2 data and see how they look, at least from the Transmart side so far. So next slide, Rudy. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. So, if we've got data loaded up in both, we can then look at the I2B2 data in Transmart. Um, Transmart likes to view things as studies, and every study has a top node in a tree, and then all the study data is below it. So, it would typically look at the I2B2 data as a single study, assuming it's all in one top node. Um, we need to figure out how to apply the authorization to get to the data. So, can Transmart actually see various bits of data or not? Um, another issue is that yeah, the data has counts for the number of concepts, but ITV2 and Transmart use different methods for that. And so Transmart is looking for the Transmart counts, and ITV2 will look for the ITV2 counts. But we need to find a way to, to resolve how those are going to work. Maybe we use one system, or maybe we make sure we keep them both up to date. Um, so the other issue is, you know, can we view Transmart data in I2B2 where it's going to be stored by study? So you find the, the demographics, the sex, age, race, etc., for subjects in the study for each study with a separate concept, which is um, a different way of looking at things. Also, a lot of the uh, Transmart data is non-human. We have model organisms, we have cell lines and organoids, and so we need to to figure out if that's really going to look right in uh, look right in I2B2. So we can explore the data and see how it looks and see what's useful. Next slide. So yeah, so Transmart, as I say, analyzes within a study. So you get various uh, tables and column values that tell Transmart that this is a study of a particular name. Uh, I2B2 doesn't have that. And so when you look at the combined data, if you don't find a study, you assume it's I2B2. And then do we assume it's all I2B2 or do we have to look more specifically at what this user is allowed to look at? We'll have to figure out ways to, to determine this. Um, I2B2 expects to see a single tree, so it'll navigate through everything and it'll find the transmart bits in various places. Need to sort out the access control. So if you log into I2B2, which transmart studies can you see? If you log into Transmart, which ITB2 data can you see and what can you do with it? Um, I mentioned the concept counts and the ETL systems. And we also need to document the data model, and for example, where Transmart hides the study data, study names, and so on. Next slide. So it works. This is um, an initial load of Transmart with one study loaded and then there's now a make target that loads a copy of the I2B2 demo data. So we have the CRC demo data there, and we have a um, protected health information table, which is currently grayed out, which means only Transmart admin users can see it. But that's because it's hard to tell whether it's I2B2 data or not at the moment. Uh, we need to sort out that formally as to who can see it. So you see under Transmart, we have a, a study there with the biomarker data where there's gene expression data. Um, we have some clinical data there um, and an organism because this is Transmart and we'd like to say that it's human. And on the ITB2 side, you see these uh, ITB2 concepts. The Transmart ones all have counts against them because Transmart has generated those in loading the data. The ITB2 ones don't because ITB2 has its own count system. So we need to sort this out so they'll look right. And we also need to then be able to drag data 
into the queries and it doesn't quite work for ITV2 yet. One reason is that 